At its peak, War Strategy game Rise of Kingdoms made $70 million in a single month, and today we're going to be discussing their unbelievable total revenue, but first, how did they pull this off? With mobile games having in-app purchases as low as 99 cents, it's easy to forget just how profitable these games can be. Especially when you consider the top three most purchased items in Rise of Kingdoms cost less than $3. So I thought it would be interesting to pull back the curtain and take a closer look at Lilith Games, the developer behind Rise of Kingdoms. But first, if this video hits 5,000 likes, I'll give one lucky subscriber a free pair of AirPods Pro. About 80% of you guys are not subscribed and I'm getting close to 20,000, so I wanted to celebrate a little bit early, make it interesting, so drop a a thumbs up and make sure you're subbed. Anyway, for those of you who aren't familiar, Rise of Kingdoms is a real-time strategy game that was initially released in September of 2018. But where did Lilith Games even come from and how did they see such massive success so quickly? Well, as it turns out, their founder Wang Xin Wen was already super experienced in the realm of mobile game development. Wang founded Lilith Games in 2013, shortly after leaving a tiny company that you may have heard of called Tencent. And given their success with AFK Arena and Rise of Kingdoms, it didn't take long before Lilith Games was competing with Tencent for mobile game downloads and monthly revenue. Now, of course, Tencent has since exploded in the last couple of years, but Lilith Games has proven that they are a dominant force in the mobile gaming market. So with all that experience, Rise of Kingdoms late 2018 launch quickly saw 2 million downloads. It was an impressive start, but it came with a catch. You see, Rise of Kingdoms was actually called Rise of Civilizations back when it first launched. In fact, some people saw the global release of Rise of Civilizations and thought that it was somehow related to the popular PC game Civilization. The similarities between these two games are obvious and abundant, not only in their gameplay and their genre, but also the characters that they choose to promote. So as you can imagine, when Lilith Games went to trademark Rise of Civilizations across the world, they were facing some legal pushback. Due to their trademark request being declined in a couple of countries, they were forced to make an important decision. Do we release the game in multiple countries under different names, or do we unify the entire game under a single brand? Luckily, this drama happened around the same time that the highly anticipated Kingdom vs. Kingdom event was first being implemented into the game, it was only fitting that the game changed to Rise of Kingdoms. Pushing forward into 2019, Rise of Kingdoms saw steady growth with an aggressive advertising campaign. When asked about the marketing campaigns for Rise of Kingdoms, head of user acquisition at Lilith Games, Yi Ming Chao, had this to say. Our user acquisition strategy at Lilith Games has always prioritized a return on investment focusing on long-term sustainability instead of aggressive scale. It's been difficult for us to strike a perfect balance between the two sides and acquire a large number of quality users with promising ROI. Now, despite that being their ideal goal, when you actually analyze the advertisements for Rise of Kingdoms, you'll see a much different picture. Now, obviously, to have the massive growth that Rise of Kingdoms did, these ads needed to be catchy and out of the ordinary in just the first few seconds. Rise of Kingdoms ads accomplished this by having a dramatic story and a unique art style. The problem with this strategy is that most of their ads have cinematics and not gameplay. Now, having cinematics that look way cooler than the game gameplay will inevitably result in more users downloading your game, but the problem is that these cinematics misrepresent the game, so when you have a lot of players download, they're actually disappointed once they open it up for the first time. Now, eventually this strategy led to a really controversial ad going out to the public, which we'll talk about later, but at its peak, this advertising strategy led to there being almost 5 million daily active users during 2020. And if you take a look at the monthly active users for this same peak time period, you'll discover that there were more than 20 million active Rise of Kingdom players during that time. The key to not only their massive amount of players, but also their massive amount of revenue is player retention. Data suggests that 41% of players will continue to play Rise of Kingdoms past day one. Now that sounds like a really good number, and it is, but typically the top performing games in the same genre hold about 50% of their players. If you zoom out and take a look at the 30 day average, you'll find that 8% of players continue to play Rise of Kingdoms for a full month. Again, other top performers in this category have around 14 and 22% of 30 day retention on its players. And this just goes to show that their aggressive marketing strategy with beautiful cinematics leads to players realizing that they're not actually interested in the game, but the ones that are interested tend to play the game a ton. Data shows that 12% of players will launch and play the game between nine and 14 times per day. If you're a Rise of Kingdoms fan, that might be you, but you don't generate $70 million in a single month if players are only playing for a couple 
of minutes. Referencing the same data, it shows that 57% of players spend more than 10 minutes playing Rise of Kingdoms every single day. But what's even more impressive is the core audience of Rise of Kingdoms. 21% of them play between one and 10 hours a day. So who are these players? Are these players just a bunch of kids who have nothing to do after school? Well, it might surprise you to find that the average Rise of Kingdoms player is 31 years old. The age range distribution for Rise of Kingdoms is actually pretty even, but the important part is all of those people are old enough to have full-time jobs and thus a salary they can use to spend in the game. If the average Rise of Kingdoms player was 14 years old, you might find that the revenue per month would be a lot lower. Now, this advertising strategy was highly effective with a couple of flaws, but the biggest controversy is when one of the ads featured a cinematic of a woman clearly getting sexually assaulted, and then the cinematic gave the player the choice of revenge or suicide. Needless to say, a lot of people found this ad highly disturbing, and it ended up getting a little bit of traction over on Reddit. Eventually, Lilith realized that they made a huge mistake and approved an ad that was highly controversial. Obviously, they removed the ad immediately and apologized to those who brought it to their attention. And you would think that something like this would cause damage to Rise of Kingdoms reputation, but Rise of Kingdoms didn't reach its peak until 2020 when COVID shut down the world. Honestly, this should come as no surprise because there were tons of games and online content that surged in popularity, and Rise of Kingdoms was in the perfect position to capitalize on this. This is when they had their most successful month ever. At the end of 2020, they made $70 million in a single month. And in less than three years, Rise of Kingdoms was able to pull in $1.15 billion in revenue as of April of 2021. To put that number in perspective, the United States Space Force paid SpaceX $316 million in November of 2020 for a single rocket launch. That means Lilith Games could have sent almost four rockets to space with just the revenue that they've generated from Rise of Kingdoms alone. To put it another way, if Lilith Games decided to spend all of their revenue from Rise of Kingdoms at McDonald's, they could purchase $200 87,500,000 Big Macs. That means they could almost afford to buy a Big Mac for every single person in the entire United States. What's interesting is that $262 million of that revenue came from the United States alone, which is typically a market that Chinese game developers have a tough time to break into. Other markets where Rise of Kingdoms continues to be highly successful are South Korea, China, Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore. And because of its international appeal, Rise of Kingdoms has been downloaded 67 million times. This means that if there are 7.9 billion people on planet Earth, one in every 118 people has downloaded Rise of Kingdoms. Of course, that number shrinks in countries like the USA, where there tend to be more downloads than average. So the next time you find yourself in a crowded Target or shopping mall, just remember that somebody else in that building has probably played Rise of Kingdoms. To put that in perspective, the best-selling Call of Duty title of all time is Call of Duty Black Ops with 31 million sales. So for every one person that's purchased the most popular Call of Duty, there are two players who have played Rise of Kingdoms. But this this pales in comparison to the success of arguably the most popular free-to-play game ever, League of Legends. League of Legends has 115 million active users, so Lilith, if you're watching, you should probably start working on a MOBA, especially considering the decline that Rise of Kingdoms has had in 2021. Remember when I said they had 20 million active users at their peak in 2020? That's been cut in half as of the beginning of 2021 with about 10 million on average. The daily active users has suffered even worse because at its peak, it was 5 million, and as of the beginning of 2021, it's about 1.5 or 2 million. However, the summer of 2021 is finally here and Lilith has been aggressively marketing their brand new Vikings campaign. Lilith has paid a ton of money for this advertising campaign, going as far as to include celebrities in their ads such as Alexander Ludwig and paying high profile content creators such as Jay Schlatt to promote Rise of Kingdoms. Will this massive marketing push be enough for them to capture a new audience or recapture their old fans? Or are the glory days over and Rise of Kingdoms is left to demise slowly over time? I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it. As always, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a video. If you've played Rise of Kingdoms on your phone, but you're interested in playing it on a bigger screen, you can download Rise of Kingdoms for your PC using a program called Bluestacks. Link is in the description. I've used Bluestacks for years. It's free, it's fast, and it's my favorite way to play. And if you don't like it, you can always uninstall it later. As always, my social media links are in the description below, so make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, all that stuff. It's always down below. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omni Archive. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace.